Hello, this is saxophonist Antonio Parker, and this is a conversation in jazz, where we are promoting jazz through telling the stories. Today, we are presenting part two of our interview with the wonderful drummer and band leader, Mr. Howard Kingfish Franklin. We ask you to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so we can let you know when we are posting another video or going live. We also ask you to donate to our Cash App in order to support the channel and help us to produce future videos. Our Cash App is dollar sign Jazzology 101. That's dollar sign Jazzology 101. Enjoy the video. All right, we're back. This is a conversation in jazz, and we're talking to the wonderful drummer, Mr. Howard Kingfish Franklin. My brother. Thank you. That's some good stuff on the first half, brother. That's right. Yes, yeah, sir. I, I, I meant to ask you on that half, when you were, did you pledge Alpha when you were at UDC? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> what, what, so so. What, what made you uh, choose the Alpha? alpha? Alpha Phi Alpha. Alpha Phi Alpha. Uh, so, um, saw some of my bandmates, you know, a couple of them was Alpha. One of them was Alpha, um, like a big brother to me, uh, Nat Bone, we used to call him. His name? Nathaniel Brown, but we okay. called him Nat Bone. Nat play, Bone? Yeah, because he played trombone. <laughs> okay. He played trombone, so we called him Nat Bone. So, uh, Nat was was an alpha mm -hmm. when I got there. Uh, he was a guy. I mean, he was very respected. A lot of people loved him. Uh, smart guy. Um, and so, um, he kind of took me on and started talking to me about fraternity. Mm -hmm. You know, coming from where I came from, I didn't really know much about fraternities except for uh, I knew about I know we used to play for uh, the Deltas Delta Sigma Theta all the time when we were kids and you uh, saw the Spike Lee movie Marcus Remember? Johnson you know Marcus Johnson yeah 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 went to he plays the house yeah yeah Marcus also is Alf of course yeah. but Marcus mom is Delta and uh, we used to play for her the great JC Haywood used to be on the news and stuff. Mm -hmm. She was in that chapter. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, my boy Joe mm -hmm. Rubens, his mom was in that chapter. Uh, they used to all say, yeah, they're my sons. You know, we used to claim us. We was little guys mm -hmm. playing. Uh, me, Bruce, Marcus, Mike Baker, the bass player that plays over Essence now. Um, and Joe playing percussion. Uh, Joe's the principal now in Montgomery County. Um, so we would be playing. We knew, okay. Oh, man, these big, rich, bougie women. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all. That was my only yeah. experience with that life. And, and you saw you so, saw the Spike Lee flick. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Who was that? Yeah, that later on. But what was that? Uh, uh, the, the, I forgot. Doing uh, the right thing, or, or you know, when what? they had the uh, they was was pledging that? and stuff. School yeah, days. School days. School days. Yeah. School days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Saw that back in the day, and uh, you know, Spike ironically had started pledging Alpha. That's where he got the idea from. Oh, wow. Yeah, he dro yeah, okay. he dropped line, but he started. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Spike. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he dropped, he dropped. Yeah. So, anyway, um, we started, uh, you know, started hanging around Nat Bone. Mm -hmm. Nat Bone would subsequently take me around the Alphas, took me around a line that was online pledging. Mm hmm. That was when everything was above ground. Yeah. Freaked me out, freaked me out. I didn't know what the hell I was looking at. Uh, but then it it uh, drew my curiosity. I wanted to find out more. I started doing research, uh, read about the jewels of Alpha Phi Alpha, the founders, and fell mm -hmm. in love with those brilliant black men and the history mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. It just turned into black history. And then I just, I'm a history guy. I just was like, this, this, yeah. this shit is killing. Yeah. Um, you know, later on I would find out Greats like Cannonball Adderley, mm. 
Duke Ellington, wow. Fletcher Henderson, you know, yeah. all alphas. Wow, I didn't know that. You know, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, a whole bunch more. Um, and then, you know, some younger ones like Antonio Hart, and yeah. Mark yeah. Gross, those mm-hmm. are my brothers. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Brandon McCune, and, you know, all these guys, uh, uh, alphas. Isn't Dr. Yes, King? Wasn't Dr. King? Dr. King was yeah, alpha. Yeah, okay. Uh, brother Dr. King, Martin Luther King. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. I might uh, not get there. With W.E.B. Du Bois. Um, okay. You know, a uh, 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 lot of great, uh, a yeah. lot of great, um, phenomenal uh, people, man. Uh, Paul Robeson. A mm-hmm. lot of your heroes was alphas. Yeah. Okay. And so once I saw that, um, I was just like, oh my God, I got it. I, you know, I'm I'm starting to feel this. So what year? And did they you showed go? me, and then they then then so what happened was I I had different I had different uh, different um, influences because the other ones was there too, mm-hmm. and they were pulling at me too. Kappa outside, Omega, Sigmas, all of them was pulling at me. But what I really wanted to do was do. Uh, to not just Alpha, but Kappa Kappa Psi mm-hmm. and Phi, Phi me well, Alpha, I'm five me which you're yeah, part yeah, of. Because yeah, yeah. Bradford it. and all, no, yeah, I, I, I never yeah. got it. So we we tried, and, man, I'll tell you that story off camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dr. Barton, man, kind of dropped the ball on that one. But I got together mm-hmm. yeah. seven candidates. Wow. For both times, tried that over a five-year period. I tried to get oh, at Kappa UDC? Kappa Psi and Phi Mu Alpha at UDC at the campus yeah. of wow. UDC. Failed. Still not there. Yeah, well, no, wow. no. We had marching band. We lost our marching band in '94. So, still had. I had the candidates lined up, wow. and he just, mm-hmm. you know, wow. and he was a member of both of them. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I was like. Yeah. All you gotta do, pretty much, is put the damn plug in the damn receptacle, <laughs> and it's done. But it, it was unfortunate he would just he left the singing. But I talk to you about it later. But okay. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we were unsuccessful in that. But okay. that, I felt like it was important for us to have those organizations and be playing this music. Yeah, no doubt. So. So what year did you uh, go over? Yeah, so that's the, <laughs> again, that's again, a, okay, okay. That's a, a mixed bag to yeah. you know, <laughs> I don't want to say that kind of way. All right, so let me ask you this. Had some issues what with is, that. Are you, are you glad that you that you pledged Alpha? Now I am, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it was, it was a whole bunch of stuff, you know, one time, man, you know, my grades, another time, it was just. It was, yeah. it was a long road for me, and, and but I, I finally got it done. But it, it was rough. Uh, yeah. But I but the the benefits and the the brotherhood and the relationships that I formed out of it, man, yeah. have been incredible. Yeah, I worked with it. And kid. then then they made then I my brothers from that use me all the time. Yeah, at their offices, their yeah. corporations, yeah, no doubt. yeah. Their weddings, I played for, I can't even tell you how many of my yeah. fraternity brothers I played I for. I worked with a cat named Matthew uh, Brown. Matt Brown. Absolutely. That uh, we, we worked together. He was a gym teacher. Yeah. And he, and, he, and, 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 we, and he mentioned you. Yeah. He says, you his big brother? Yeah. Matt Brown. Yeah. 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 I was with him yesterday. Really? <laughs> Saw so him yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate brother. Ate some what fish fry. Yeah, yeah. Got in, <laughs> Matt just got engaged yesterday. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay, great, man. I'm gonna to hit a, To an AKA sister. Really? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my boy. <laughs> I some for that. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm the AKA's rough, yeah, man. man. The AKA's a rough man. Uh, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> but he, but yeah, Matt Brown, yeah. Yes. So, mm-hmm. uh, um, now, so you have you gra- you got your teaching degree because you you were teaching. You became a well, teacher in the public schools. Mm-hmm. Um, what has that experience been like for you? Oh, God. Give it to us. <laughs> I, 
the good, Ooh. bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Man, we need a whole other segment for that one. But I just, I just sum it up to say, teaching is, you know, outside of me loving children and caring about children and, you know, wanting them to see positive black images from yeah. black males. It's challenging. It's rough, man. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no support. People don't really respect music. Um, Did you, you know, have challenges with some of the kids, any of the kids? Oh, plenty. Yeah. Oh, man, good and plenty. And, you know, then you don't get the support from the parents. And it's, it's. And here you are. You say, you say I'm coming back to help my community. It, it, I'm coming yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get kicked get, in the yeah, butt yeah. for it. <laughs> and you're just like. Uh, but I, I commend all the educators. out. There's tons of us, man, that, you know, I applaud all of us, man. I, yeah, I really I, do. I appreciate all of us. I love all of us. And I just think it's awesome that, you know, you're staying in the schools and you're trying and you. You know, you're doing some wonderful things there. You know, yeah, I figured I figured out what works for me. Yeah. Because when I first started teaching, I thought I was gonna cut. I was like, man, put me in the worst. I'm gonna cut hood. somebody. I, I said no. I said put me. Y'all don't understand the children. This is how I was. Because yeah. I didn't really. Yeah. I thought I y'all didn't understand right. the killing. Y'all didn't right. speak the language. Right. Man, they put me in. I, I was I, my first year was at Brown. Next, down the street from Springer. Okay. Brown Middle School. Absolutely. Junior High. Brown Junior I remember Scott. that. Yeah. I remember that. Then I then I took, went down the street and toured at Charles Young for five. I remember that too. And so, man, it was like eye opening. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, whoa. This is. Because we were teaching the crack babies. You know what I'm talking about? Mm hmm. And it Me was. Me too. Yeah. And it was like, okay. And at the time, man, I thought I could just raise my voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and it was going to make it. And, and you realize that yeah. you just did nothing yeah, yeah. but exacerbate yeah. the problem, right? That's what you re That's what you realized. Yeah. It was like pouring, like, it's like when you pour that water on alka Yeah, yeah. And then it starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fizzling and, yeah, oh. those are the kids. But it was the best thing for me because it helped me to be a father. Helped me to have patience because I didn't grow up with a father. So teaching helped me to understand the young mind. It helped me to really, because I had to figure, I had to say, oh, okay, I got to figure this out. And, and, you know, and I used to watch veteran teachers. I mean, I mean, I would have the kids, man, they off the chain. Then the, the, the veteran teacher come out, oh, everybody get on. And this is elementary school. Mm. And so I said, okay, let me study. And I look young. Mm. So I always had this right. young look. I look like one of the kids. Right. And then I got. Still do. Yeah, and for some reason, kids, they, I got a, a preacher look. They yeah. used to call me son of a preacher. Yeah. <laughs> they used to call, and they say, Doc. They better they, son they say, than, better they, than son of something yeah, else. Yeah, they, yeah. They said, they're going to Dr. Martin Luther King. Wow, I don't know why, man. They always wow, gave me that. Wow. I, got, I got, you know. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful, though. Yeah. In a sense, that they revenge you as such. Yeah. Well, that you they know. They revenge you as such. But they was into, they, I wasn't thugging, though. So, you know what I mean? You know, they were they were, they, they were tracked to the cats in the hood element and all that, man. And I'm trying to raise them up to be, you know, like how your how your parents taught you. And and I, it was it was crazy, man. Cause cause yeah, you you may not have, like I know this man. Uh, uh, you know, you said not thug enough. Yeah, you kind of gotta have a little bit of street up in you for them. Oh, like, I have, yeah, DC street. Yeah. So you got Philly. You know, <laughs> yeah. Philly, yeah, it's a different kind of yeah, it's, it's a different, different kind of, street. Yeah, yeah. But I um, learned them. It was yeah. like when I, you know, uh taught different districts and stuff like that. And, you know, it just you know, you gotta have a little bit of street in you. Yeah. And but 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 I found um when you're having those issues, um, it's when you have that regular communication with the parents. Well, you attempt. You're not always successful because a lot of them, you know. They don't answer their phones. Yeah. They don't respond, uh, so forth, you know, until the kid starts getting that F at home yeah. on his progress report. And it's like, why am I kid getting the F? Yeah. Now, now you want to talk. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or when a kid gets jumped or when he gets in a fight. Oh, yeah. now you want to talk. Yeah, yeah. So now you want to talk because something's going on. But prior to that, I've been calling you not answering the phone. Yeah. When we're talking about the kid's grace. So... 
Yeah, and, and then, you know, but I learned, I'm a veteran teacher now. And so I, I, I don't be screaming. I said, now, you know you're not supposed to be standing on that table, don't you? <laughs> Come on off that. Now, and, and I, I, yeah. know how to, I know how to make you, you got to, yeah. they got to feel you. Yeah. And so, yeah. so, so, because they're getting screamed at at home. All day, and, and they all expect night. you to scream. Yeah, so I, so when you do the yeah. opposite, yeah, yeah, it's so, a fact of an op. Yeah, you know, I, you know, it's hard because you, you know, hey man, come here, let me so talk what, to you. What grade level was, have you? Have you? Well, pre K through twelve. Oh, you taught every grade oh, level. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But I, but I, you know, I, hey man, come here, let me talk to you. Yeah. Hey, that's what I need from you. Yeah. yeah. Calm. Yeah. I need you to lead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need you to be a leader here. Yeah. I need you to help me out. Yeah. I can't do it without you. Yeah. And see, when you start having those conversations, yeah, that, that, yeah. They, they start, oh. Yeah. I see what it's called up there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> getting a little serious, man. You're getting. Yeah. Yeah. I need that. Yeah. So I got to make sure this class is. Yeah. Do the kids love you? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> Big teddy bear like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know the beautiful thing, man. I'm telling. I, I, I've been teaching almost 25 years, man. I don't. I've run into kids that, that I had in elementary school. Matter of fact, I got kids. Oh yeah, they grown now. I got kids yeah, that I taught. Here. I taught their parents. And, yeah. And it's like wow. Are you sitting there looking like crazy? Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. Like damn, yeah. I've been teaching a long time. Baby. And so, uh, but it's, the beautiful thing is that, like you said about that planting seeds. So I don't always look for immediate results. My job now is to plant the seeds. You don't have to listen now, but at some point, life is going to teach. You're going to come to a point in life where you got to make a choice. Okay. Do I want? So my job as a teacher is, and I teach life through music. That's my philosophy. Right. I te- I'm teach. i going to teach you. you know, I, I know y'all. most of y'all ain't going to become a mu- musician. Right, 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 right. But I want to teach you principles through music. Right, that exactly. That you can carry uh, exactly. anywhere, you know. Whatever, exactly. whatever direction you want to go. Yeah. And so, but I get kids that, that, I, that I've taught 15, 20, whatever years ago, man, they, and they're very thankful and, and appreciative of what I was trying to teach them back then. Well, I'll show you teaching some life lessons with that. Yeah, I was just kind of. I was always real. I was always Antonio. Like, I, oh. I wasn't trying to be. Oh, man, it's yeah. only, only, only one. I yeah. mean, and that's why I appreciate you, yeah. too, because yeah. you. Oh, it's just like me in the sense, it must yeah. be that 1969. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just, but we real. Yeah, we it's all that real. Know. Yeah. And you and I know you gave them some some life lessons and yeah. inspirations that they're still carrying on today. Yeah, man. I and know you did. The kids appreciate you being genuine. Oh yeah. And you know, but they can they can sense when you're fake. When yeah. you're disingenuous. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. you when you when you're just there for a paycheck. When yeah. you're just there, yeah. you know and. And I tell everybody, if you're there for a paycheck, go find another occupation. It doesn't pay that good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah man, so. And I've always been the kind of kid, kind of person that can laugh at myself. I kids, you they used to call me Mr. Pickle. I mean, and I would. Whoa. I, oh, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know if I like that guy. <laughs> man, that call. And you know what? I was, a, I'm like, I laugh because it's funny to oh, me. Oh, yeah. And man, and so. Some teachers might take that person. I didn't. <laughs> is it kosher or is it deal? <laughs> I'm just asking. Yeah, man, but... Um, I mean, come on, man. I mean, <laughs> nah, man. You know, am I sweet pickle or salty? Yeah, that, I mean, yeah. I, I just need to know. So but that's something, you know. And then you learn the trick. Have some candy on you. Oh. <laughs> Bro, you got, that's yeah, your best yeah. friend. <laughs> Oh, so I was big on, and still am, I'm big on rewards. Yeah. Consequences, not so much. Uh-huh. I ignore a lot of, I ignore a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, that's been my philosophy here. You know, it's, uh, you know what? If you're having, if you're, if you're showing negative behavior, mm-hmm. I don't have to acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. Okay. You cutting up in the back. I see you. Yeah. I'm going to ignore you. I'm going to act like you're not even cutting up. Mm. I'm going to keep teaching. Mm-hmm. I'm only rewarding and paying attention to the people who are showing positive behavior. Yeah. That's it. Yes, what's up? And I got this to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a big old bag of Kit Kats. Yeah. 
They yeah. stop. They, yeah, yeah, oh. they, yeah, yeah. Mr. Frank, what you gonna do with them Jolly Ranchers? Yeah. Mr. Frank, <laughs> Bow Pops? Yeah. Really? Yes, sir. That's. <clears throat> yeah. And you, you can have one. Yeah. If you do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. It's like. I yeah. Say, hey, it's all. I see. This is all in your control. Yeah. <laughs> You have the control to earn a blop, a, uh-huh. blop, a, a, a blow pop. Uh huh. Yeah. You, you get it or you oh, don't? You can't, yeah. <laughs> so we we kept score tally on my wall to keep it every day. So if you score anybody that scores eight points, eight to ten, uh huh, get a reward. Anybody seven and below, try and get it next day. <laughs> Try and get. Oh, wow. So they was trying to get that score. I'm Cause see, to you. you lose points every time you get an infraction. Mm-hmm. So I gotta talk to you one time. Up. Oh, so you start at ten. Yeah. It's up to you to lose your points. Okay. Some people keep ten mm-hmm. all day. Oh no, I ain't gonna act up. Miss mm-hmm. Franklin gonna take a point from me. That's right. And I ain't gonna get no candy if I lose two mm-hmm. points. <laughs> I mean three points. I, I know candy's out the question if I lose three points. Oh, no, I'm going to behave myself. So that was known. Oh, Mr. Franklin got that stash. Yeah, yeah. He got that stash. <laughs> he got that yeah. real stash. Yeah, yeah. He got a candy. Yeah. <laughs> Man, shh. Don't mess up. Yeah. You would see kids doing self-correct. Yeah. You see kids getting on other kids. Yeah. Hey, shh. I ain't trying to get in trouble with you, man. I want my candy. Don't get no Starburst. Oh, man. <laughs> They you go know, crazy. Oh, man. And then they got they get picky. Yeah. I want the orange. Yeah, yeah. I want the pick. I want the pick. No doubt. Now, put that back. Can I get two? Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Now you can get one. Yeah. It's got to last me. Oh, man. Man. Man, it's something. Good man. stuff for school. So, uh, one more question on education. What do you think are some of the problems with education? And you, I'm talking about impact and all, you know, and all that. So, what do you think? Some things that should be fixed or changed. First, you need to start with stop underpaying teachers. Okay. Pay teachers what they work. Mm-hmm. No teachers. You don't have doctors, lawyers, yeah. none of that. Pay teachers what we're worth. Okay. Uh, starting salary, most average teacher probably in DC with what at what forty five thousand or something. DC is the starting, high, I, I make a good salary, but DC. But I'm saying this DC one of the highest paying schools. Yeah, it's one of the highest. They, DC, but they DC, started like 45 when that first year, right? 45, 50. Well, I don't, I don't know because I did something it, like that. I started 40, 25 years ago. So yeah, I don't know but how, I think I don't it's 45, 50. Now. I started making that when I started 25. Yeah, but that is it stayed there. It, no, and they never, it never changed. Oh really? But yeah. Nah. One thing about DC, your thing go up, man. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. So, it, it's so, a, it's, but, but I'm saying. The starting salary for average teaching in D.C. is probably about 45 to maybe, 55. Maybe, or 50, yeah, maybe. To 50. I, I think, think it's 49, 50. maybe 50. Something like and that. And then as you, and, and it depends as on you your, go. And it depends and, on if you have your master's and that sort right, of Right, yeah, and so that adds on. And yeah. then and then if you score good or your impacts, yeah. get more money. Man. So they, all of that. D.C. Penn, I ain't got no problems. Matter of fact, I was. <laughs> Check it out. I can work. You buy over hundred. I can work. Now, eh? Ah! <laughs> Salute. Salute. Uh, uh, but and the beautiful thing about in DC, I could choose to, I could choose to work part time, two and a half days a week, and make that salary. Some teachers start. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So I ain't going nowhere. nowhere. <laughs> But I tell you this, bro. So far as that, uh, they start paying the teachers first. Two, need to really take a very deep examination of the leadership. I'm talking about top to bottom. Like most of the time, they keep putting these leaders in that don't love children. <laughs> Gotta love children. <laughs> no, they treat it as a business. Yeah. It's not a business. It's a school mm-hmm. district. Mm-hmm. Um. Secondly, the selection of principals need to be come from people who love children. And they have to have a sample. It needs to be plenty sample size for people apply for principalship to uh, pretty much 
you know, show where they've, you know, they love children. You mm-hmm. got to just show that. Uh, you know, the problem with a lot of principals is they don't love children. They come there, getting their six-figure salary. They say they do. <laughs> Oh, we all say a lot yeah, of stuff yeah, yeah. on the internet. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. But when you get in, and they get in that building, you clearly know that they don't. They don't have the best interest. They just care about, oh, let me keep my test scores up. Oh, let me keep the yeah. negative behaviors down. Let me keep yes, the parent it's a top complaints down. down. It's a top right, down. Top right, down, yeah. right. It's a trickle down effect. Yeah. And it's not sincere. So you, you stop, if you change those three things, I think you'll see an improvement because what you'll do is you'll inspire some teachers. Well, let me tell you what I learned when I turned 50 a couple of years ago. Because, you know, I've been trying to get out of teaching ever since I started until when I turned 50. And I realized, I woke up, I said, you know what? Because I realized the first thing you have to do, you have to choose the princ- your principal. Don't just work for any principal. Work, find, like when I, when I, when I interview, I check out the, pr- the principal's temperament. Yeah. Because, and when I land on a principal that, I know she, that they're not going to micromanage, you know, and we can, we might have our dimension, but we know how, it ain't got to be all that. Yeah. They, they're not vindictive. Yeah. And once I land on that, we good. Yeah. You know, and, and so the next thing I learned that I've, I've come to accept is that the system ain't going to change. Nah. So I'm going to have to become, play the game. Yeah. So I go in there, man, and, and I just, and, and then my third thing is do my best. You know, um, it's like, okay, I'm going to try to give you what you want. If a prince, if I have a principal, she wants to see the kids doing this X, Y, and Z. Yeah. When she comes in. They'll I'm, be doing X, X y, y, and Z. Z. <laughs> but when yeah. she go out, they're doing A, B, C. Yeah. <laughs> so. Fake it till you make it. Well, you know, well, you, you know what works for your yeah, kids. Right, right. Nobody can right. come in and observe you. Right. That don't know the subject. Well, unfortunately, you. they have a rubric. Yes, that they go and, by, yeah. and it's it's strict, it's stringent, and it's specific. Yeah, and, but that it a lot don't of times it does that. Yeah. That rubric doesn't connect to what the children actually need yeah. or how the be, how they learn exactly. best. You know, we got kinesthetic learners, we got yeah. you know auditory yeah. learners, we got you yeah. know, visual yeah. learners. Yeah. I mean, those yeah. are three different yeah. entities. Yeah, so I, I used to try. And to you got to teach them from yeah. where they learn best, I not from to, what you think. I used to try to fight the system. Once I learned, to, once I got wise, I said, "You know what? Okay, oh yeah, I'm a, whatever that rubric say. When they come in there, I'm gonna get yeah. them, and yeah. then we good." But you got to be consistent. You have to have routines. You got to have procedures. Yeah. You know, if you know, hey, they line up straight in front of my class every day on the square, skip a square every kid. Certain things like that, kids must know. You stop at my door. You don't run in my classroom yeah. ever. I dap you up at the door, pop, pop, pop. Hey. Yeah, no doubt. You go in, you take your seat. Yeah. Pop, 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 pop. You go in, you take your seat. Yeah. See, the, that structure yeah. is the key. No doubt. When you get that structure, then you can teach. Yeah. Now, see, I can go in there now. Oh, I can teach them what a triad is. Yeah, yeah. You know, something that they wouldn't be able to pick up if they moved around the class acting like a fool. <laughs> Uh-huh. I could teach you what an interval is. Yeah, yeah. I could teach you how to count sixteenth notes. Yeah, anything. Yeah, because now you're listening. Yeah. I have you. Yeah, no doubt. So, yeah, man. So all we can do is our best. At the end of the day. At, at the end of the day, bro. That's it, man. I want to talk about you as a band leader. Uh oh. <laughs> now you. Now I guess should we thank Art Blakey? Or, I think, uh, you know. A drummer is supposed to be in the, a, in the background. Yeah. Support. Yeah. But now you're a drummer. What what made you become a um, decide to become a band leader? It was out of necessity. Well, you just said it. You just said it. Mm-hmm. I bought a I bought a rocket. Uh, the great Art Blakey. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know. Uh, Ibn Abdullah. Uh, yeah. Ibn Buhaina. Yeah. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. You know, I loved yeah. so much. Yeah. One of my heroes. Uh-huh. Um, brought his Art Blakey quartet with Art Davis and McCoy Tyner. Yeah. There. And uh, you know, it was a uh, it was a uh, on the impulse label. Mm. Like about eighty eight, eighty nine, yeah. mm-hmm. 
Tile Ruckus. Yeah. You still yeah. living Ooh. there. Wasn't them the good days? Did you go oh, in there and read the back oh, of the book? Would you go in there? Tile Ruckus, and, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all you young people <laughs> who did not get to experience that. Yeah, I, that was, I pray for you. Yeah. Because Tile Ruckus was phenomenal. Yes, sir. We used to live in there. You remember yeah, that? Man. So that was the meetup spot, man. Uh-huh. Oh, man, all of us meet there and just start chatting it away and have a ball in there. But uh, when they brought that Art Blakey, the, the leadership from the drum position. You know, people don't realize, and this is why I give people uh, clarity. The drummer is the quarterback of the band. Mm. We don't start throwing them passes down the yeah, field. Yeah. Ain't nobody getting that's nowhere. Right, that's right. That's right. It's that feeling. Yeah, that's right. Got to feel good. Yeah. It's going to come from us. Mm-hmm. Your bass player is your offensive line. <laughs> you blocking for you. Yeah, yeah. Land the anchor down. Come on. <laughs> the piano, that's your running back. Mm. Okay? Hand it to him. Yeah. Let him run the rock. Yeah. Carry it for you. He going to protect you. Mm. He going he gonna, to he gonna help you push down the field. Your wide receivers and tight ends, that's your horn players. Guitar players, yeah, yeah, vibe yeah, phones, yeah, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Hey, and yeah. then vibe phone is can't swing <laughs> unless it's some of this behind him. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And some of this. Yeah. Or some of this. Mm-hmm. And if that ain't popping, he ain't gonna be doing nothing but hitting <laughs> some damn bells. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Good luck with that. So, I've always said that. And then I saw a uh, part about a record by the great uh, Jack DeJanette, Parallel Re- Realities, mm-hmm. long time ago, who was also a leader. So, Tony Williams had all his records. Leader, band leader. Mm-hmm. Um, Terry Lynn Carrington, you know, uh, great drummer. Cindy Blackman, my mm-hmm. sister. Mm-hmm. You know, just leading yeah. bands, man, you know. Uh, Bruce played with her, Mark Carey, who was mm-hmm. my big brother from co- college. You know, Mark Carey was there with us at that time, too, on piano. A lot of people don't know hey, that. UDC? Yeah. Yeah, I remember Mark, yeah. And, uh, you know, they were all playing with Cindy. Yeah. And uh, that's how I found out about her prowess. And I was like, oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Why is a woman playing the trumps like yeah. that? Wow. Yeah. Uh, boys, run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Boys, run. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Girl power. <laughs> so did you always <coughs> possess leadership skills? Or is that something that you had to learn? So I've always been a leader. I've been a take charge guy. But then my mentor, Calvin Jones, did nothing but just heighten that. He taught me how to be an effective leader. He taught me, he would tell me, he, taught, he gave me my first contract. Show me how to do contracts. Show me how to negotiate deals. Told me pay scales and wages and how I was the band leader. I was supposed to get a little bit more extra, mm-hmm. and how I take my band leader fee. You get you a little bit more. Yeah, extra. yeah. You take you a little. Absolutely. Bit. <laughs> you, you take Absolutely. yours off the top. Absolutely. <laughs> did, hey, you, did, you, <laughs> did you get the gig? No, did you get the gig? Yeah, exactly. Did you did you yeah, write that contract that's, up? That's right. <laughs> Did you have to go back and yeah, forth with yeah, that client? Yeah. No, you didn't. So why the hell you got to get what I get? Yes, you're right. not. <laughs> you're you, not. You taking yours off the top. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You, I like how your eyes brighten up. <laughs> yeah. So, so did you did you uh did you uh learn any leadership qualities from your dad? Oh yeah, my dad's. A, oh, definitely, my dad's a leader. Yeah. See, uh, I had my, to... So my daddy was a, uh, um, he's Howard Senior, of course, Children's Hospital. This would have been his 50th year there mm-hmm. um, the other day. Uh, he's retired now, uh, had a stroke, unfortunately, 2014. Mm-hmm. Well, my dad was the director of operations at Children's Hospital. Okay. Right across from Howard University, yeah. built yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Helped build that hospital, the wow. new one. I yeah. remember when it was in the old one building on 13th Street. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid when he first started there, when I was a baby. Um, so my dad started there in 1971. Um, my dad was a fearless leader. It just worked his way up, man. He was an engineer. So you would so, hear some of that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. So the leadership dad would. Then he worked up to director of operations, which he was in control of the plumbers, the electricians. The, the the engineers, 
the, the, the carpenters, yeah. the painters, everybody, all the tradesmen. Um, he worked his way up to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, which is why a lot of people don't know, but I love home improvement. I, it's a passion. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, wow. I, I, I just, I do it. <laughs> I, you know, I love it. Wow. I love working and building stuff and yeah. doing stuff like that. Get that from my dad. Wow. Uh, carpentry and electrical and stuff like that I love. Um, don't really mess with plumbing too much, but mm-hmm. some of the basics. But, yeah. So what's, what um, What do you think? What are some of the dad cha- told me how to be a man, basically. Yeah. My dad. What are the, some of the challenges of leadership? Or is there... Uh, is it just natural for you? It's natural for me, but some of the challenges are when you have individuals that have their own agenda and they're not about team. And, you know, there's no I in team. Yeah, yeah. So that's when it becomes a nuisance. And see, with me, with the bandstand, so, you know, there's been times that my leadership's been challenged on the bandstand, and I simply fire you. (laughs) Wow, yeah. There's no need for me to... Yeah. There's no need for me to argue. I don't want your energy on the stage with me. Yeah. That's important. We talked about the en- mm-hmm. energy earlier. If you bring an ugly energy to the stage, I don't care how talented you mm-hmm. are, and you bring in an ugly energy, and then you want to challenge me mm-hmm. on my bad stand, nah, yeah. gotta go. And how, how have how has your uh, all your playing experiences? I know you played with Bruce, you know, for a long time. I mean, I. It was a couple. I, 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 album. Uh, Alan Johnson let me hear album recording that Bruce did. Y'all did. I think at, when Alan had a crib in Sula. Yeah, in Sula. Absolutely. And then he he had a little studio in his. Yeah. Y'all recorded at his spot, right? Mm-hmm. Man, that joint was. He, Bruce never put it out. Mm-mm. That joint was. Chris Fun and uh, yeah, that joint was Piper. And he never put that <laughs> joint out. I was like, I was. Oh, you talking was, about stepping up? Yeah, yeah, that joint was nice. I don't know why uh, Bruce never put that out, man. Well, but y'all sound great. You know, it costs a lot of money, but that music, that music, uh, if he put that music out today, it's a lot of people that can't handle it. Man. They can't handle it. Well, ain't nobody playing real like that. Well, the beautiful thing about it, again, is the synergy. Oh, well, ain't nobody playing real like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I'm like, but I'm, you know, me and Chris and Alan and Bruce, we yeah. did a lot together. Yeah, man. So I was like, I, I don't know why Bruce never, it's just. Well, he's talking about putting it out, but you know, in due yeah. time, I don't know why he didn't put it out either, but. So who are Damn. some of the other people you've played with? You mentioned uh, you you played with you played with Jackie Mac. Yeah, I played with Jay Mac. What was uh, that? And his son Renee. Yeah. Um, do you get do do you, are you like when you play with cats on that level? Do you get nervous? I mean, or you're are you ner- excited? You're excited and nervous. Uh huh. You know, cats on that level is just it, the thing about them is they're particular. They know what they want to do. Mm-hmm. They 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 let you know. You know, those types of cats, they don't oh they don't miss words, man. Hey, look, this is how I want you playing. Yeah. This is what I need from you. you Have know, you ever been vocal. in a situation where the situation was beyond you and you had to really like go deep in and dig to, down deep? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah in the trenches, man. You know, I'm playing Curtis Fuller. Yeah. Just passed away, great yeah, yeah. trombonist. And, oh man, we got into some shit, man. And, yeah. And it ooh, it got. Really? Yeah, you had to get down into the depths and go to the abyss. <laughs> and, 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 you know, yeah. oh, yeah, man, Benny Benny Golson. Yeah. Uh, James Williams, man, really challenged me. Playing with you the great pianos, yeah, yeah, James yeah. Wow. Williams. So how'd you? How'd you he, ooh, he, ooh. Did you get these gigs through recommendations? Or did they call, oh, call man, you? he piped the hell out of me, man. Yeah, he was a bad It's kid. like just so much range on the piano, and, and he's just like, so, so are you just sitting at home and, and these cats call you on the phone? And, and yeah, yeah, you get a p- promoter or something. Or somebody, or yeah. A lot of times, you know, somebody, you know, running a festival or, stuff. hey, yeah. man, what you play with, such and such. You know, you're going to be playing with this. Really? Oh, yeah, and, I'm there. And you've played, you've played around different parts of the world? Oh, absolutely. Plenty um, of countries. And, and then, but but, but the, the, the beauty, man, is uh, about all of that is it's just – having that opportunity to mm-hmm. play with some of those greats. Yeah. And you're just so thankful and blessed, man. How did that impact you becoming a, 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 a leader of a band? Oh, man. Leadership is just 
everything because you so know, those you experiences, watch his cast. those experiences. Have oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, man. You he just got a presence like with Sly Hampton. Yeah, played with him, man. He just walks up on the stage and automatically just start directing cats. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> you, you, like you feel all the energy. Yeah. You like, hey, and he's talking soft. He not yelling. He don't mm -hmm. raise his voice. Mm -hmm. How you doing today, young man? You ready to play? <laughs> and you like, well, how should I answer that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. you gonna burn me up, yeah, or yeah. you know. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, you, yeah. you you know, you got yeah. a little bit of trepidation because you yeah. like, yeah, that's a legend talking to me. I don't know what to say. I stood out and I was, uh, and I met Dizzy. I met the great Dizzy Gillespie and the great Milk Bags Jackson when I was eight, nineteen years old, mm -hmm. outside the Blue Note in New York. And uh, I swear, man, Sam. And I, then I met the great Sam Rivers. Wow! Right after that, and it's just. You just look at these cats, man. If you ever stood around these cats, you would just be like, oh, my God. Yeah. It's another thing. Elvin, Elvin Jones, man. Yeah. Like that vibe. Yeah. And you was just like, oh, the man, vibe. It's the vibe, yeah, man. It's yeah. the vibe. I was around Quincy Jones yeah, and, like, yeah. it's the vibe. Yeah. Well, those cats come from, they, they come from that era. Well, number one, a lot of those cats... They came from a time when the black community lived. The, they they the, did. They and, did. And, and it was, I mean, you had black clubs. You oh, had yeah. a black community. Oh, they got stories, man. Yeah. So they got they got stories. They got, you know. And again, when you when you are around cats, like when you they talk music. My dad was just talking yesterday too. Like, for example, those guys and my dad came up with some of them guys there. Talking about how he picked cotton. And wow. Just telling my lady yesterday, yeah. I was like, hey, you know, I picked cotton. I wow. lived it. Yeah. I lived it. Yeah. I know what it looks like. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. So you sitting there, she like, you, you did what? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean, the only thing I know about cotton is it's in my pillow on the bed. That's it. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing I know about cotton. I don't know about picking it. But that's what those cats, yeah. those cats, and this is why you never, you would never sound like Archie Shep. Yeah, no doubt. Or, or, or Phineas Newborn. Yeah, but you, or, and you know, or, you know what's crazy? Those cats was trying to find their own sound and their own identity. Yeah. Nowadays, everybody's trying to play like, like you say, like Train uh -huh. or like this cat, or like, and so that's, you know, to me, it would seem like it'd be easier to find your, your voice. It's not. It's not. It's yes. not. You got to find your own voice. It took me some time to find my own voice to sound like Kingfish. Yeah. But it took, it was a pot of stew. Okay. Let me, mm. oh, well, Cozy Cole was playing this on this. Yeah. Let me steal a little something from him. <laughs> Big Sid Catlett. Oh, he's playing this on, let me steal a little bit mm -hmm. from him. Max, let me steal a little bit. In, let me throw a little Philly up in there. Yeah. Let me throw a little Elvin, a little Tony. I mean, you put in that pot, you start stirring it up. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. As a drummer, when you listen and to and then you taste it, you be like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah he's almost good." That's kingfish. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kingfish. <laughs> Cause I done threw everybody up that's in there. That's kingfish stew, baby. You know, <clears throat> even if the younger ones yeah. in them, Dane and Rob Peterson and all them guys, I stole a lot from them guys. So, so when you, uh, I always ask drummers this: as a drummer, when you listening. To drummers, you know what distinguishes this drummer from this drummer. Absolutely, really. Mm -hmm. It's subtle things. Well, see, since drums are a, a rhythmic instrument, mm -hmm. a lot of people dismiss them as anything connected to what would be considered melodic. Mm -hmm. But however, that's that's far from the truth. Gotcha. All you gotta do is put on like. Put on like a, a Jack DeJunet video, a Tony Williams video, or something. Hear the tones that they use, the tuning. Wow. Some of the young was like Ralph Peterson and, yeah. and, and all of them, Jeff Watts. It was all about effects, getting a sound, and being melodic at the same time. Um, Philly was so melodic. Mm -hmm. Philly Joe, you just, 
Papa Joe, mm -hmm. all of them. I mean, they would play the melodies. You could hear the drum cadences matching with the chordal harmonies in the tune. Wow. And when you could hear the figures in between, like when they trade eighths or whatever, and you still hear the form, that's when you know your now, shit's swinging. Who did someone teach you how to hear like that? Or oh, that's Calvin Jones all day. Listen to the form. Wow. You got to know the form. Yeah. You can't. See, drummers got to know this too. Yeah. And you got to. Yeah. Wow. Tune, man. Yeah. Drummers can be out of tune as well. <laughs> wow. Yes. Absolutely. I heard plenty of them. I told, I told my little brother, Russell Carter Jr., one day, bless his heart. I said, Russell, you playing all this killing drums, man, but you sound horrible. <laughs> and he looked at me. He said, what? And I said, you sound horrible. He said, I don't understand. I said, you're playing a lot of drums. Your chops are sounding good. Mm -hmm. But your damn drums is trash. <laughs> and he looked at me. And he said, wow. <laughs> he didn't know whether to say thanks or what. <laughs> Finally, he thought about what I was saying. I said, I'm saying you have to tune, brother. Wow. Why are your drums flat as a pancake? Mm. Your drums have, they're not singing. They don't sound. They don't have no oomph to them. They just yeah. beat. Sound like you beating on pots. Mm. Wow. And you playing nice, crisp. Your hands are nice, mm -hmm. but you're not coming off right because you, you ain't tuning. Worth a damn. Wow. You out of tune. <laughs> Do you want to hear a saxophone out of tune? <laughs> wow. Do you want to hear a little yeah, pitchy yeah, saxophone? No. Nah. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. nah, dude. Uh uh. Wow. People like you say, Jackie McClain's a little shot. So, did he appreciate? Can you play like Jackie McClain? Not you. I'm just saying. Uh -huh. That's what I asked. Uh -huh. He was sharp. <laughs> but that was his effect. Yeah. He played edgy like that, and he used a metal mouthpiece. Yeah. See, I even know that I'm a damn drummer. Yeah. Because those that was his sound. Yeah. And people don't realize certain cats use certain things as mm. as kind of like motifs, not just but not motifs in the sense, but more so device. Yeah. It's the device. Mm -hmm. It's a sound. They're trying. They're, they're they're looking for. Yeah. And so, that's different. Yeah. Versus Joe Blow over here, he just don't know. Not what aware. Yeah. Yeah. He ain't aware of it. And I ain't think Russell was aware of it. So I made him aware of it. So did did it help? Was it very helpful? I I think it did because next time I heard him, he had his damn drum sounding better. Wow. You know. Wow. That's that's. You know. That's how we sometimes learn. we gotta be hard hardcore on him and see. The old heads wasn't easy on us. Yeah. You know, yeah, our they, generation. They you, yeah, they, hey. yeah, that's what I'm saying. They told you. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> what the hell are you playing? <laughs> See, that's what I got. Yeah. That's what I got. <laughs> Jones would walk up to the drum set. <laughs> oh, man. <I> be... <laughs> what the hell was that, Fish? <laughs> yeah. That was so unmusical. <laughs> he said I was unmusical. <laughs> now, if I had flatline and took that personal, well, I took it personal because I went on work my ass off yeah. on it. But <laughs> if I had to just folded the tent, yeah, because he told one cat, and I knew this is what I knew times were changing. He told a saxophone cat, cat was playing second alto in big band, and Doc said. Stop the band, you know, I even wave. I saw uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, man. Hey, hey, man. Need you to get in tune, man. You gotta, you're real out right now. I say, what? I say, you're real out. So he fidgeting with his mouth, face. He go do all this. I said, no, nah, man. It's worse than that, man. <laughs> get you, get you, get you. He say, you need a, you need a G? You need an A, I mean, you see the A? So, hey, give him an A, man. He ain't can't hit the piano because he, he sound pitchy, right? Still pitchy. Uh -huh. Man, something wrong with your horn, man? <laughs> Jones started, you know. And Joe, yeah. And then the cat just said, jumped up. And you know how we have the band room right there, and you know it's the, 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 
the big stair, the the stairs right uh -huh. there. This cat ran out of the bedroom and threw his horn <laughs> down the damn stairs, right? Really? The, not over the stairs, but the you know that drop is yeah, right there in the middle yeah. of UDC, where it's a whole. Oh, it's like you throw, dropping two, your horn. That's two. That's two flights, like oh, that's, stairs. That's three flights. Three, I, oh, wow. Yeah, because you got because yeah. you on that top floor. It's one under that. Yeah. And it's another one. Yeah. And the bottom. Wow. He threw his horn down there, and the horn just. Psh, every parts went everywhere. He was upset. Yeah. He flipped out because Jones was correcting him, and I knew times was changing there. This was in the nineties, wow. and I was like. Yeah, times Ooh. are changing. Because back in the day. Yeah, shoot, man. I, that was nothing. They used to be tough. That was that. easy. That, that was, was cake. <laughs> that was, you got the cake treatment. Oh, my God. Mad, imagine what he's. Ask Frankie Addison <laughs> and all that. What he said, yeah. <laughs> I remember, man. I, I, ask him. I'm going to tell you a story when I was in college. I, I can't tell the professor. Tracy Color, all of them yeah, can yeah. tell you. Oh, yeah. They can tell you. What Jones would say to saxophone players. Yeah. But I'm saying back in our day, the, the teachers could talk to you like that. And, the, you know, oh, you just. It's cussed just, at us, yeah. man. I remember one time this I cat was. Doc would get fired. Died, died. Yeah. I remember one time we were in improv class. And this cat, he was soloing. And he was just, he was just playing anything. Right. <laughs> so in the middle of his solo, <laughs> Doc was Doc Irby. shaking his head. Irby. Not Irby. I can't, <laughs> I can't say who it is. Okay. He's no longer here, but so Doc, Doc was like shaking his head like this. So after he finished, Doc looked up and said, "You suck." <laughs> I fell out, man. <laughs> I know the feeling. I, I fell out, man. It's, I know the feeling. Oh man, it, I know the feeling. And you know, I was crazy. So I fell out laughing. I know the feeling. Yeah, yeah. So they, that's what we had. That's what we had came up with. We, you know. And see, they say we hard. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Go back. <sighs> Investigate. Yeah. They don't like, know. like, and it like was you hard. ain't seen a hard. And before our time, and it for was. them, harder than them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you should put that down. You should yeah. never play again. Yeah. You suck. You're horrible. Yeah. It was a, it was a story about, I ain't going to say her name. She was trying to sing. <laughs> and Jones told her, he said, I want you to put that microphone down. <laughs> Never touch it again. <laughs> oh, that's. Funny. I ain't gonna say her name. Oh man! But she hated Joe's after that, man. She hated his guts. But you know, sometimes what happens life. too is she, some of the professors they know you're not serious, and they only want you to waste your money, yeah, yeah. and time. It was like a so, novelty to yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah, and they're gonna let they they can tell Bless they can smell heart. that they can smell that like a mile oh, away. Yeah. So they're like, yeah. don't waste your time. Don't waste my time and don't waste your time. Yeah. And your mother's money yeah. and your parents' money. So yeah. let's get to it. You know. And so yeah. Man, if you want it bad enough, that's why I say anybody that wants it, that wouldn't do nothing to him. I asked Doc why did he believe in me? Cause I felt like, you know, I couldn't play nothing. He say, he said, Man, I saw something in you, man. Yeah. And I and I think what he saw was my spirit. Yeah. They could tell if you want it. Cause eventually, if you I want didn't it, even see that. Yeah, I was like, "Why the hell he let me in? I can't play." Yeah. <laughs> but they can, they can tell, right? Because you could tell somebody that wants something, like they want it. You ain't got. Want it's it like so you, bad. you don't have to tell somebody that wants it to go practice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you know, nobody could have ever told me I, I, I wasn't going to do. Used to practice all the time, oh, bro. Man. You, you know, practice, practice, practice. Man, I was trying to get, I was trying to get it. I, I remember that <laughs> reading them a twos and everything, practicing all them long tones and stuff, man, and skills, and wow, arpeggios. I remember that, man. You was uh, all yeah, on that, man. Shoot, that's why you had that sound. Yeah. Well, I'm still working on it, but you yeah, know, well, all of us are. So I want to ask you something, man. Uh, do you write? Do you write? So I dibble and dabble okay. with the composition, man. I need to do a much better job okay. of that, man. There's some things that uh, it's been just bothering me okay. about melodies. I've been uh, leaning on my brother Jeremy Pelt okay. a lot, who I feel is a great composer. I love his his, yeah. his arrangements, the way he writes. And Jeremy has been just phenomenal with helping me with that, and he's been sending me stuff, and you okay. know, uh, you know. Uh, 
you know, another good guy talk about stuff about writing stuff is Warren Wolf. Oh yeah, oh, he, you know, yeah. Warner talk to you about some of that stuff. Uh, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of good composers out here. And I just want to write some yeah. some more stuff. So I got to I'm still working on stuff. Yeah. It, it just takes me a Have long you time to into write any, melodies and stuff like, like the, that. Doing beats, music production. Nah, nah, yeah, nah, get into that. Nah, I ain't okay. Nah. Um, so when it, it's time for you to do a recording. Well, well, I've just I just finished the recording actually. Oh really? So okay. I have two recordings. Um, uh, and I'm working on getting those out now. Uh, one is a tribute in the, playing the music of the great Bobby Hutchinson. Wow. So, okay. a tribute album to him, who's one of my musical heroes. I love Bobby Hutchinson. Yeah. No doubt about that. Uh, playing his tunes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, me, Alan Johnson, Chris Burke, Herman Bernie. That's going to be coming out soon. And a, uh, an album just for me. Um, um, and I used a lot of different cats on that album, um, which is a mixed bag. So you gonna put them out together or one at that, a time? Uh, se no, separately. Okay, yeah, man, no. looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm gonna put yeah. that out uh, this year. So that's done. Those just, those have been mixed and mastered. Yes. Yeah. Trying to get all the copyrights and everything in mm -hmm. place. Put those out. Let's talk about your company. Mm -hmm. Howard Franklin Music. Howard Franklin Music, yeah. So Howard Franklin Music is a one-stop shop uh, uh, company in which, um, you know, I do weddings, events, all kind of things like that, uh, private affairs, private parties, and what so forth, uh, from your living room to the big arena, auditorium, or whatever, the concert stage, whatever. Uh, different configurations we use. Uh, got R&B bands, funk bands. Um, and you know, straight ahead bands, of course, that are configurations I use, uh, mix it up. So strings. pretty much strings, yeah. bands, DJs. That's what it is. Really? Strings, bands, DJs. So who's the website is uh, www.howardfranklinmusic.com. Okay. Um, and then what's 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 Wildflower band? The so Wildflower is my funk band. Okay. That's what I use. My funk, R and B, contemporary okay. sound band. Uh, Wildflower is a and in which you could look on YouTube and look at uh, my page, uh, Howard Franklin Music on there. You'll see Wildflower. Wildflower is like R&B soul. Play a lot of covers, uh, uh, consist of singers and horn players. You actually yeah, I did a gig. Play, yeah, yeah, play yeah, with yeah. us one time. Uh, uh, no electric bass, yeah, yeah, drums, yeah, yeah. percussion. I was, I, was listening, uh, I was listening to the different elements, the different types yeah. of band. Man. One thing you got, man, I hear is the groove, man. You know how to, whether it's jazz, it's yeah, you, the pocket that. making. Appreciate that. It, it, it's, that's, that's, yeah. I well, that's, that, that's my job. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, if you're a drummer, your first primary job yeah. is to set that groove down. Yeah. And not, now let me ask you this, because there's, it's, it takes a certain skill to be able to move in these different styles of music yeah. and be authentic in them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so you're able to do that. Yeah. So is that something that just coming up, playing all these different forms of oh, music? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's natural. Plus, yeah. plus, you have to use, so, say, so for example, I have different drum sets, sizes, okay. sounds, tunes. Now, I got five drum sets. Yeah. Different, all of them tuned differently. Yeah. You know? I got a drum set that I use, big bass drum, 22 inch, 10, 12, 13, time up here, 14, 16 mm -hmm. floors. I mean, it's a thumper. It's made for R&B. It's made for rock, reggae, any heavy music. Wow. You know, uh, funk. Do, do you also? But then I'll play swing. Yeah. I got my little 18 inch bass drum, tune high pitch, yeah. 12, 14, yeah. you know, snare with it, you know, ride cymbal. Yeah. That's a different sound. Yeah. And you have to play in the context of that music yeah, and what you're okay. playing at that time. I want so to I ask kinda, you this. I'm I a chameleon with that. Yeah. Like Branford is on saxophone. Yeah. Yeah. I want to ask you this. Can, are all drummers percussionists in the sense, I know they drums is a percussion instrument, but in terms of playing, you know, you have strictly percussion players. Mm. They play kungas mm -hmm. and... Yeah, to ballads yeah. and all that. Are you a percussionist as well? No, okay, absolutely not. Okay, so that's yeah. a different. That's a different job. Totally different job. Like, percussionist. So, 
Drummers are the meat. Uh huh. Percussionists are the seasoning. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I sprinkle a little Lowry's, put a little green pepper on it, onion, yeah, on top of that meat, and now we swing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so can a percussionist can like could you do, do percussionists play drums? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Some of them. And sound authentic? Sound like a percussionist. It's Playing drums? Sound, when they play drums. Yeah, okay. Some of them sound like a drummer when they play drums, and they sound like a percussionist when they play percussion. Wow. Yeah. And that separates the boys from the men. Yeah. Now, that's hard. Yeah. Sheila E can do both. Wow. For example, if you mm -hmm. hear Sheila E on the drums, you hear Sheila E on percussion. Mm -hmm. She's a percussionist when she sits down and percussion. When she's on drums, she's a drummer. Wow. That's heavy, man. She can differentiate, and you can, and, and that's not easy talent. Yeah. Manu, uh, uh, what's my man? Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a few of them out there. Yeah. Ayerto was good at that. Yeah. You know. Man, I got to, my hat's off to y'all cats that, that run, like, agency bands. That's a lot. Of, do, like, I, I, mean, I do I mean, work with agencies. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to say your agency band, but like that do weddings yeah. and different functions. Yeah. Like, Cause yeah. that's a lot of responsibility. Lots. And, and lots. Uh, and so so I, don't expect to get paid when I get paid. I know. I'm just messing. Yeah. I understand. No. I, no. No. And this is what I have to tell Cass. Look. Oh heck no, man. You a you hired know. gun. Yeah. But I brought a, you on the gig. Yeah. You didn't do none of that leg work yeah. behind the scenes. You didn't get cussed out by the bride. Yeah. I did. <laughs> but not only you got to make sure people are there on time and the stress. And this is like when somebody does a wedding, the stress, this, is, this is their time. You want to make sure the sound. That's why you have to pay yourself. Yeah, this, you want to make sure the sound. Because I've been on, I've done gigs with, man, we doing it with a, with a, with a, with a, with a wedding band yeah. or AT band. Yeah. And the sound, something with the mics, man, it made, and it's, and, and it's loud I, and boisterous. You got to have a good sound, quality I'll sound. I'll say, I'm guy. glad I'm, I was in the horn section. I, I could turn around. <laughs> Oh look, but, man! I got I'm I'm funny by my sound. Yeah. Like Dean West, I don't know if you know Dean West mm -mm. of Maryland, but Dean West is probably I may know him. to me. He works like when Stevie Wonder comes in, he uses Dean. For oh, him. is he with at drums? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Lights and yeah. brothers. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So Dean West is probably the best yeah. sound guy, top, pound for pound. Does he work with uh 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 Kirk Whitman? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, Dean is. You got to have the right sound man running your, your cuz they make it so easy to play. Mhm. Mm yeah. If your sound is right. Mm -hmm. You can hear everything around yeah. you. Oh man, you can go. Yeah, no doubt. I got some final questions, bro. We got we uh, have to end, man. Uh, uh, yeah, um, man. It's been yeah. Nah, we do, man. Uh first it's question. the longest interview ever. Ain't yeah, it's like, <laughs> What is it like being a father? It's amazing. Yeah. And you have two young I got two boys and two girls. And you have twins. You have twins, two little twins, twins, right? Yeah. What is it like having twins? Scary. <laughs> nah. Do they run in your family? Oh, twins run in your family? Uh, both. Okay, wow. I always wanted some twins, man. Oh, Are they man. identical? Be careful what you ask for. Nah, it's got a boy okay. and a girl. So okay, you got a boy and a girl. Okay, yeah. got you. Wow. But uh, they, they, they number love, man. So loving, man. Just, just I thank God for them every, t every day, man, because they're just... They're just amazing kids, beautiful kids, man. Yeah. Just smart. And my two older ones, man, I thank God for them every day. Yeah. It's just they've made my life complete. Yeah. And what it is, you know. Do they, do they love you? Oh, man. <laughs> Fast in that, man. Only on Tuesdays. And Thursdays. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, uh, I, look, my kids love me, love me. Good. And you can feel it. They make me feel it. Good. And I, and they, because they know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love them yeah. to the core. Yeah. And I, 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 I make no bones about it. Oh, I tell all my children know that. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, you kind of mentioned what's next for Howard Franklin. You talked. Yeah, you got the CDs, and so is that's that the next, next, the that's big the next thing, man? That's okay. It. Yeah, it's time. Time. Yeah, 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 yeah man. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. With the, let it. us know. Um, oh, I keep you posted. Yeah, it's time. And our last question, man. Hey man, next time you record a record, make sure I'm on there playing drums, man. <laughs> play everybody else, man. I need you putting some now you did some nice compositions on that album, man. You need me on that. <laughs> I need you. you need me on that. Yeah. Hey, take it over the, what, what a, the top. What a pitch. <laughs> take it over the top. In the most arrogant. Yeah. Way, 
<laughs> Just make sure you put me on your next album, bro. <laughs> Yeah, you deserve well, everybody. Uh, maybe me. the ne- he, next one after the next one. Nah, like, man, he's nobody. He ain't never used me, man. You uh, use oh, all so these he, cats. We dancing around me and you, brothers, man. Okay. See how we do. Right, so he gonna put me. He gonna yeah. put me on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> Got to. It's on the uh, way to go. Okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna Let's hold you it. to that too. I, I love okay. to do it. Right. I love to do it, man. You right. know, we 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 got a synergy though on okay. stage. All right. You know that. Yeah. Real thanks for what we talked about earlier. We got that synergy. Oh yeah. You know, because we brothers yeah, in real life. Yeah. Come on, I mean, you know yeah. what it is. Real recognized real. Real recognized real. Yeah, real yeah. going to come out on that record. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. You know. All right. So, don't have no phonies on your record, man. Huh? Don't ever have a phony on your record, You, man. you, you wild. <laughs> <laughs> you wild, Kevin. Last question, man. Yeah. Um, how can people contact uh, you to learn about... You mentioned your, your, your uh, what, mention it again, and uh, so Facebook. they contact. I'm, 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 I'm everywhere, man. Talk so to I'm everywhere. Uh, you can just hit my website www.howardfranklinmusic.com. Uh, that's L Y N, not L I N, not L Y N. So Franklin uh, Music, Howard, like Howard University, Franklin, like Aretha Music. Dot com. Um, and my email is info at howardfranklinmusic.com. My phone number, 202 two, two, It's been this, since 2000. Same number. I'm easy to contact, bro. I hope you ain't got no Howard old Franklin bit of girlfriends. On, they gonna... Howard Franklin Music on uh, <laughs> Instagram. I said, I hope you ain't got no old bit of girlfriends because you just gave out your number. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Well... <laughs> My brother, it's been a. I'm I'm really honored um, to have you on the show, man. man honored and, to be uh, here, man. I'm Thank glad. God we can hook this up. Yeah, man. Um, I really learned a lot, of, lot, lot, lot about you that I didn't know. Well, you know, it's a lot of. You know, I always say, man, it's a lot. It's cats walking around, man, and we we see them all the time, and then we don't find all this stuff to their funeral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we yeah. Sh- that's because we're and that's not why I do, talking that's, enough. That's why I do this, man, because uh, you know. We got a story. I didn't know he did that. I didn't know yeah, he. Yeah. And then you can't tell him because he dead now. Yeah, you yeah. know. And not only that, man. I like to hear Cat's story, to to really get to see how, because your your music is a reflection of you. Absolutely. And so when I hear your story, man, I can it just it just enhances how I perceive your music. Well, well, you playing. know, I, I say it again, man. That's that's why. That is why. I sound the way I do, uh huh. And somebody over here sounds the way they sound. Yeah, no doubt. It's no disrespect to them. Yeah, they're gonna sound different from me because their experiences in life were different from mine. Yeah, no doubt. And my experiences in life is the reason why I sound the way I sound. Beautifully stated. Because cats have always said, "Fish, I don't know what it is, man. You just different. You're different. <laughs> the groove is that they're groove." Like, <laughs> oh man, man, you you remind me of like a lot of people say. Most people say, "Ah, oh, Blakey," I don't hear that, but most mm-hmm. people say that. But I know why they're saying that. They're saying that because of the spirituality. They're saying that because of the the oomph mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. it. It's 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 like yeah the the heaviness and the yeah. the weight yeah. of it. Yeah, and that's why they're saying it and the, and the soul behind it. And you know, our Blake went through a lot, man. You gotta remember that man was born in nineteen seventeen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, yeah. You, yeah. You born during Prohibition, Jim yeah. Crow. Yeah, that bad seen some stuff. Yeah, Damn. yeah. That's why I say those cats got a right to complain. And yeah, we like, yeah. Nah, I don't want that yeah, smoke. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I don't want that smoke. Him and Dizzy Gillespie, man. Yeah, and all them cats, man. Yeah, Charlie Parker and all them guys, man. And you mm-hmm. say. Man, Charlie Parker died so young at 35. Yeah, he was trying to get the hell out of here. <laughs> he knew what the hell was coming. Yeah, well, he, he lived, his music lived. His, his, his music his lives, and, and people still can't play his music. Yeah, it's, so, it's, yeah. so so what'd that tell you? He was a genius. Clifford yeah. Brown the same way. Yeah. I mean, but come on, man. Lee Morgan. Lee Morgan. Yeah, them no cats, doubt. man. Just read his story. And read his the book and watched the movie on him. Lee yeah, Morgan, his yeah. birthday was a couple days ago. Yeah, and yeah. you just like, wow. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful, man. Anyway, we're glad to hear your story. And Thank you, while you're here. <laughs> um, and we appreciate you, man. And we wish you the best in all that you do. And we, I'm going I'm to I'm keep your word on what you just said 
Or, or, so, so oh, yeah. we gonna do. We gonna, we gonna make it happen. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. So, uh, and I wanna my brother, uh, thank you, man. out to. Uh, have you heard from Sunny Sumter? Making sure prayers out there. Yeah. I know she was yes, in the hospital yes, with COVID, she, man. Yeah. That's my girl. Yeah, yeah. She take care of us, man. Oh, yeah. Musicians I, around I here. I interviewed her here too. I so saw she, it. Yeah. It was a great yeah. interview, and yeah. I just want to give her a, get well, baby. Love <laughs> you. All right, Mr. Howard Kingfish Franklin. Thank uh, you. Yes, um, Thank there you. it is. That's the real. Thank you. you know, this is a conversation in jazz, and we'll see you on the next one.